Hello and welcome to our video on classical civilizations, an A-level that we're running for the first time this year, um, having had a short hiatus from offering classical civilizations, uh, we're reintroducing it this year. I thought I'd start us off with this quote from um, a professor of classics at King's College London. Studying Mediterranean antiquity superbly equips individuals to think socio-politically and to persuade other people orally, visually and in writing. It hones transferable skills like source criticism and culturally relativist analysis. It's a perfect A-level to do with any other subject because the Greeks invented all academic disciplines, including medicine and material science. It gets school leavers and graduates great jobs and gives them nourishing and beautiful brain food for non-working hours for life. And I'm sure that this uh, is, is the, the stub behind Mrs. Porter and myself enjoying it so much at school, university, uh, and enjoying teaching it so much over our careers. Um, the image I've selected is the one that I think probably best represents the lasting legacy of the classical world in terms of style, in terms of impact, architecture. Um, and, and when you look around the world, whether it's Monmouth, London, or anywhere else, you will see the vestiges of, of classical civilizations in everything that we do, everything that we build. Um, and I think the subject has immense value and immense wealth to offer young people. So what sort of a student will engage, benefit or enjoy um, classical civilizations? Well, the obvious answer is everybody, but, but some are obviously going to be more suitable than others. Um, and you can only pick three, possibly four A-levels. So you do need to be very sure that it is going to offer you something in terms of your long-term career path, in terms of your university choice, um, or an area of, of significant individual interest that it's worth studying alongside other A-levels that are going to help with your pathway, whilst this might be something that you simply really want to study because of a, a personal interest. So if you're interested in exploring the past, if you're interested in exploring the origins of literature or drama, if you're fascinated by the archaeology of, of the ancient world that surrounds us and in southeast Wales, particularly through areas like Caerwent, Caerleon, we have some of the, the best ancient architecture in Western Europe. If you enjoy the skills you might develop, whether it's debate, critical analysis, extended writing, um, self-reflection, if you're just looking for um, an opportunity to delve more deeply than you've had up to now, in the classical worlds of Greece and Rome, this will um, benefit you. This will offer you a great deal. So your teachers, both Mrs. Porter and I have degrees in the ancient world um, and varying elements of classical civilizations. Mrs. Porter indeed also studied it at A level herself. Um, our interests are diverse as well as having areas of considerable overlap. We've selected A-level units that we feel will suit our strengths and offer students the um, best range of knowledge available from the, um, from the units on offer by OCR. As you can see, we've both got a significant interest in Roman Britain. Um, sadly, that unit isn't on the syllabus anymore, as both of us really enjoyed teaching before. We've both got extensive experience of delivering tragedy and epic, as those were both on the previous A-level syllabus that we taught, and both of us looked at those to some degree or other at university. I had a particular interest in um, ancient Macedonia and Philip um, II and Alexander. Um, Mrs. Porter has a more cultural interest in the ancient world, and so we're hoping that our, where our interests have diverged and our, our studies have diverged, that will be able to bring both of those elements to students' understanding and learning of, of the unit. Um, we will be delivering it in a very collaborative fashion, um, teaching units together and where appropriate individually. So the exciting bit, I guess, what does the course offer in terms of subject matter? I think the first thing to state is that we are using the OCR specification that there will not be an AS in the first instance, there will be a two-year A-level programme offered. And that's because WGAC does not offer classical civilizations, and therefore we've had to go with one of the English exam boards. So the first 
unit, the main unit, is the world of heroes, focusing on Homer and Virgil's epics. Um, in this case, for us, the Odyssey and the Aeneid, um, although we will obviously reference the Iliad in its connection to the Aeneid, um, which is extensive. And the, the focus here is obviously to focus on um, both the political and historical background, as well as the literature, um, as well as the stories, as well as the philosophy, the, the morals um, that both texts portray. How are they similar? How are they different? How do they demonstrate um, continuity between the ancient Greek, the Roman and the modern world? And how do they show um, the differences between us? Very excited to, to be delivering this. Um, Mrs. Porter will focus in all likelihood on the Aeneid, um, whilst I will focus on delivering the Odyssey, allowing us to um, split the course evenly with each of us taking one of the other two units. So, unit two, Greek religion. Obviously an area of particular interest for young people um, and with the stories of Percy Jackson um, and other literary connections, whether it's Harry Potter or other, um, it's an area where lots of students have a, have a degree of familiarity, um, although perhaps without the depth required um, to truly understand the importance and significance of Greek gods and also the wider religious constructs around those. So we'll look to develop those through architecture, archaeology, art, pottery, primary sources, um, secondary historians' writings, obviously, and in trying to encourage students to more fully appreciate and understand the influence of Greek religion on um, our, our culture and society today. And the final unit that we'll study is Greek theatre, both tragedy and comedy, focusing around um, frogs, which is a comedy of sorts. It's interesting they refer to old comedy and the nature of it rather than comedy as a whole, because it is a very specific genre. Um, and indeed the same for tragedy, um, initially focusing on um, Oedipus Rex, um, but also a number of other plays. Um, and these will change depending on the uh, syllabus and OCR's um, decisions on set texts. Um, and here we'll be looking at obviously the philosophical and human element of both tragedy and comedy, the juxtaposition between the two um, mediums, um, but also again, archaeology, architecture, pottery, primary texts, um, and subsequent critical analysis um, in order to engage students with the place of Greek theatre, both then and in our world today. For those familiar with the history department, um, nothing is going to be terribly different in terms of the way you're taught. You will be taught by passionate, dedicated specialists. Um, there will be a research and inquiry element. We will obviously be looking to increase collaboration and hopefully with the COVID crisis coming towards an end, there'll be more opportunities for that. And hopefully we will all throw ourselves into collaboration that little bit more having missed it for so long now. There will be lots of feedback and opportunities for reflection. We will obviously be supporting and encouraging students to develop their independence in preparation for university. We will use um, discussion and debate extensively to support students' understanding. So even though there's been a short pause in the um, delivery of A-level classical civilizations, the faculty itself has continued to offer experiences in the ancient world through um, trips, particularly in the last couple of years to Rome. Sadly, COVID has suspended the trip to Greece that we had organized. Um, and in the past, we've made visits to um, London museums, um, particularly the British Museum, um, to look at the ancient world there. We've taken day trips to Caerwent and Caerleon in our local area. And we've gone to theatres to watch ancient tragedies performed in a variety of guises. Um, and this is something we want to expand and develop moving forward. So what's in it for you? Well, certainly indulging your passion for classical civilizations is going to be the number one factor if you have that interest. We will develop your knowledge of a broad range of historical, literary, and philosoph philosophical issues, um, amongst others, 
We'll bring in architecture. We'll bring in elements of archaeology. We'll certainly be trying to develop as broad a range of skills and content awareness as we possibly can. I'm hoping there will be a high degree of challenge and achievement provided through this curriculum, um, an understanding of different identities within society. Uh, we want to improve the effectiveness of every learner in their independence, particularly, and in preparing them for university through a variety of lecture, seminar, and traditional teaching techniques and styles. We want students to be able to critically reflect on the knowledge they gain and critically reflect on texts that they read. Uh, we want to develop communication and problem solving skills. And we certainly are keen to develop students' sense of empathy and tolerance. And indeed, um, both epic and tragedy and comedy to a degree all focus um, on those, those skills particularly. Fundamentally, we want students to be able to make judgments to be confident that they can evaluate any context and make an informed judgment um, on what their um, position or actions should be. So independent, ambitious learners, ethically informed and empathetic citizens, creative and enterprising contributors, confident and resilient learners, ultimately is what we're looking to achieve and what the whole school is looking to achieve. It's a nice opportunity to put in a Roman road so I put a nice picture in at the bottom, um, an open road to a plethora of, of pathways. Um, but hopefully with the resilience and long lasting nature of Roman roads, which are still in evidence today. Thank you. Um, I hope this has helped at least formulate more questions about what options you wish to take. Um, and obviously, if you want to talk to us, please get in touch by email, phone um, or coming to see us once school is reopened. Classics has long been considered one of the core facilitating subjects, whether you're looking at the languages um, or the history or the literature. Um, it is considered a, a broad church subject that develops students in a wide variety of ways, all of which make them more desirable for whatever course they choose to pursue. Obviously, if you're interested in pursuing ancient history or classical civilizations in any form at university, it, it would be a critical subject to take. Um, beyond that, it is massively supportive of philosophy, of um, English literature, of drama, um, potentially even of some of the sciences or medicine, depending on the areas that you particularly choose to research and read into around the, the hub of the curriculum. So it's, it's on lists of preferred A-levels at a variety of colleges. It is valued at Oxbridge. It is valued at the London universities. It's valued across the country. Um, but it is not a subject where the content is going to be required um, for any, any degree. So you do need to look at it as a facilitating subject that develops a personal interest in a subject area whilst preparing students' skill sets for a wide variety of future opportunities. I always like to look at um, who in the past historically has studied a subject Obviously, it helps us understand the, the potential and the breadth of potential um, of ex-students of classical civilizations or classics. So I, I've got a nice mix here. We've got Thomas Jefferson, one of the founding fathers and third president of the United States who studied Greek. We've got J.R. Tolkien um, and J.K. Rowling, arguably two of Britain's most celebrated, at least, if not most renowned or most successful um, authors. We've got the inventor or founder of Adobe Systems, to give you an idea that classics isn't limited to the literary professions. Um, and Jonathan Evans or Baron Evans of Weardale, who was the head of MI5 for some time. And it just gives you an idea of the breadth and range of what we mean by a facilitating subject um, in people who have studied it in the past. So what are the requirements? What do you need to bring to the table, as it were? Um, a C in history, if you've studied it, C in English language um, or literature. Obviously, we will reflect on every student on an individual basis. But if you've struggled in history and English, you will find the A-level classical civilization skill requirement um, very, very challenging. Um, a willingness to learn, obviously, a passion and enthusiasm for the subject, definitely. An ability to be organized and independent, a determination to succeed and a spirit of inquiry and questioning. 
Um, I think perhaps most important is dedication. Dedication, commitment to achieve your own potential. So thank you very much for um, taking the time, if you have, to get this far through the video. Um, we are certainly really excited about developing material and beginning to teach this for the first time in a few years this September. If you have any questions whatsoever or any level of interest, please come and see us in the history department or make contact through um, email. Thank you ever so much and goodbye.